This is Rescue Shuttle Control. This is uh, checking in now on Mission Day 28. And I'm very pleased to report that all the telemetry indications are that your uh, shuttle craft is on target. Its uh, trajectory is looking good. And uh, all we have to do for the remainder of your mission is to uh, make sure that we've configured all your systems, your autopilot systems, for landing. And uh, we've been setting you up for that uh, task over our last few sessions. We've just got a little bit more work uh, before uh, we'll be ready to go ahead and uh, initiate the landing sequence. As you recall from our previous sessions, our most recent sessions, we've been uh, gradually adding additional logic and additional uh, functionality to our system uh, to get us ready for the big day. As before, we won't be changing the uh, hardware wiring that we've prepared during our last couple of sessions. As you can see, this is the same wiring setup that we had previously. And uh, we're going to continue uh, adding functionality and logic until uh, we're ready to go. So without changing any of the wiring here, let's have a look at what's uh, being added and what's different in today's code. Much of the uh, code that we were looking at last time is going to be unchanged. You'll see that we're still making use of the uh, U8G library. Uh, that's for our OLED display, as well as the keypad. We haven't yet implemented the encoder, but uh, that's going to be coming up soon. The um, various pin definitions that we've used for our activation dip switches and for our landing uh, indication light are the same as they were before, as are the various constants that uh, we've uh, defined to um, use in our code. Uh, you'll notice that uh, most of this looks familiar from last time. There are just a couple of new logical variables that I'll point out right here. We've added a couple of integers that we're using as true-false indicators, zero for off or false, and one for on or true. These two indicators that we'll be using today are the was pressed variable. And this will be an indicator, a logical or a Boolean indicator that tells us whether or not the uh, correct activation key was pressed by the pilot in order to initiate final landing. Then uh, we have another switch here, another uh, variable rather, that is going to be indicating whether or not the dip switches have been correctly configured for the landing sequence. So those are initially set to off or false or zero uh, when they're defined here. And we'll see soon uh, how those are changed during the execution of our code. Everything else here should look familiar to you. Our, uh, setup of the uh, keypad and the necessary uh, correspondences between keypad rows and columns and characters. Here are our bitmaps that uh, we're going to be using to provide uh, feedback to the pilot, to you. And uh, as we go down here past all of the uh, bitmap constants, we eventually get to the operative part of the code. And so uh, Let's see, there is a lot here. Here we are. Our setup routine, we don't need to look much at that because that has uh, remained unchanged. It's really just uh, activating the input and output pins that we need, just as before. And so we'll uh, spend most of our time here today looking at the logic contained within our loop routine and the associated functions that are being called from within that loop routine. So really, the only thing that's of uh, particular interest to us right now is the picture loop, because the picture loop is what will be continuously uh, refreshing and updating what's displayed on our OLED panel. And as we've seen before, all the action is happening in this custom function draw. It gets called within the picture loop. So let's go ahead and have a look at draw and see what's the same and what's different from last time. You'll notice that in our function draw, 
There is some familiar construction here, but there's a new function called pilot keypad check. And that is going to be called every time draw is executed. And pilot keypad check, it has some tasks to do that obviously involve our keypad and input from the pilot. So we'll see uh, just how that's going to work. Uh, when pilot keypad check gets called, it's going to have some side effects, which will potentially change the value of the display bitmap. And the display bitmap in the subsequent lines of code here control just exactly what's being shown on the OLED display. Uh, so before we um, get into that, let's go ahead and have a look at pilot keypad check and see just what's happening there, because that's at the heart of what's new in today's logic. Pilot keypad check is a function that returns an integer value. The way that we're going to do it here is return a value of minus one under some conditions and return a value of zero under other conditions. And you'll see what those conditions are here just in a second. Um, the first thing that happens in pilot keypad check is that we call yet another custom function called calculate face. You may remember calculate face from our last session. This is the uh, logic basically that uh, determines what is the appropriate feedback to put onto the uh, OLED display. So calculate face is going to return a value that may be negative one or it may be zero. And what we're doing is we're doing a check here. If calculate face returns a minus one, and if switch activated is still in its zero state, it means we're not ready. It means that we need to wait and wait for the switches to be correctly configured. So uh, that means we return immediately and just uh, go into yet another loop of the uh, uh, of draw and the picture loop that calls draw. So that's what happens before the switches have been flipped by the pilot. Now what's happening during this time is that the pilot is watching the progress of the landing and should be in sequence operating switch one, which is the initiation, switch two, which is the intermediate approach, and then switch three, finally, which is the final approach. And those should be toggled in the correct sequence in order for the uh, landing to occur as planned. Now, let's see what happens in the logic of pilot keypad check if it turns out that calculate face is returning something other than minus one. Let's look at calculate face and see when that might happen. You'll see, which is familiar from our last session, that um, we have our three switches, switch one, two, and three. We have now a series of different cases. Last time, we just set those cases to various numbers just so we could see what they would do. Now, they have a particular intentional function for us. If switch one is on, and switches two and three are off, that means that we're in the first phase. And so we should display on the bitmap the first or low throttle position indicator so that you give the pilot feedback that you are in the first phase. Now, if switch one is off and switch two is on, that would be an error condition because it means that the pilot incorrectly went into the second throttle position before going into the first throttle position. And so we'll give a bitmap indication that basically says, yikes, that wasn't the right thing to do. Similarly, if switch one is on and switch two is on and switch three is off, then that would be correct for the second phase. And so we would then display bitmap eight, which is the second throttle position. If switch one is off and switch two is off, but switch three is on, that's also a yikes condition. We uh, have increased the throttle uh, to max, 
at the wrong time. And so we once again will get an indication on the bitmap that says don't do that. One being on, two being off, and three being on would be something that should never happen. And so we'll uh, get an indication to correct that. And uh, similarly, one uh, off, but two and three on is something that uh, should not ever happen. And you'll notice that if any of these indications are detected, then once we finish with the else if clause, we'll drop down here to return minus one. And minus one will be returned by this function calculate face as long as anything except the final condition is achieved. So we'll always get a minus one, and this will be a minus one right here until the final completion of the sequence is correct. When the final completion of the sequence is correct, that should correspond to switches one, two, and three all on. In that case, we don't return a minus one. In that case, we set the bitmap to high throttle position. We set the switches correctly activated variable to true or to one, and we return a zero. So if that logic is all correct and clear, it means that uh, when the switches are in their, their uh, correct position, what we will now have is, uh, let's see, let's find where we were. Uh, here we are. We will uh, not execute this set of statements, but instead we'll drop down here and we will look for input from the keypad. So custom key will tell us, uh, will give us a value corresponding to any key that is pressed by the pilot. Now for our mission, we are going to be using landing program A. And so the pilot needs to know that and press key A in order to activate that landing program. So if the custom key that is pressed is A, that is the correct selection, and the variable was pressed now can be set to true or to one. And then we'll return. So we'll return zero and we'll see what happens next. So pilot keypad check is going to return right here. We'll enter the switch statement that displays the appropriate bitmap. And you'll recall that the appropriate bitmap at this point is going to be high throttle. And so at that point, we should see high throttle displayed before the key is pressed. We should see high throttle uh, displayed on the OLED display. But now this draw is going to get called again next time through the picture loop. And so let's go down and look and see what's going to happen here in pilot keypad check. Since was pressed has now been set to one, we will drop down now to this case. Was pressed is equal to one now. And so what's going to happen is the display bitmap will be switched to number six. And if you'll recall, bitmap number six is the indication that all three switches are in their correct position. So we have three check marks and that's an indication to the pilot that everything's good. And we'll uh, also, at this point in today's exercise, we'll use the uh, landing indicator light to indicate successful completion of the sequence. And so we'll set that to high and the blue light should go on. At that point, we go ahead and return from pilot keypad check, which then returns control back into draw. And there should be no further changes in status at that point. So at that point, the exercise is done. So this is pretty much all you need to work through and implement for today's session. You'll notice that at the bottom of today's code, we have a placeholder here for a uh, routine that's currently doing nothing. This is the rotary encoder fine tune. And this will enable the pilot to do final corrections and adjustments during the final landing approach. 
and uh, we haven't got anything in there yet that is uh, additional code to be added in our final pre-landing day on day 29. So with that, let's go ahead, let's do a quick run through and test of this code to see if it does what we intended it to. And then you can work through it on your own and uh, verify that you'll be ready for the uh, next phase in our uh, development. So at this point, let's double check and make sure that the code does compile and doesn't have any uh, syntax errors in it. So let's verify that. We're compiling our code and it looks like we're done compiling. Once again, we're using about 73% of our program storage space. So we're uh, really uh, coming up against the, the limits of our hardware here. Uh, we have to now upload the code. So let's go ahead and upload it to the, uh, to the hero. Okay, upload is in progress. Upload is complete. Okay, so uh, we appear to be in a waiting mode right now. We've got our default uh, OLED screen face on right now, and uh, we should see changes in response to uh, actions by the pilot. Now, let's simulate a mistake. Uh, we know that in order to correctly initiate landing, we need to execute the uh, switches in order one, two, three. But if the pilot was disoriented or confused and accidentally initiated phase three first, uh, we should get a warning on that. So let's go ahead and flip switch three first. And you'll see, yes, okay, we got the yikes face. So that was a mistake. Let's go ahead and fix that, send it back. Similarly, we should get an error warning if we accidentally activated switch two before switch one. And sure enough, there's our warning. It tells us, turn the throttle down, you're too high. So now let's go ahead and uh, do the, the correct sequence. At least let's get started on the correct sequence. So I'll press the first switch to the on position. And sure enough, I have low throttle feedback on the OLED display. So uh, that looks good. I should, when the time is right, switch, switch two on. If I slip up and switch, uh, switch three, I'll be warned that's, that's an error. So let's go back and fix that and go to switch two. So now switches one and two are on and we're getting the correct feedback that we're in the mid throttle position and uh, things are going smoothly on our uh, on our descent to landing. So um, if everything is ready and correct, of course I might mess up and do something like uh, turn the, the switch to the off position here in one and that would be bad. So let's go ahead and put that back. So I want to go now all three in the on position for final terminal landing phase. There we have full throttle up. And we're now in a waiting phase. We are showing the, the full throttle screen and we're waiting for the uh, correct program to be initiated by the pilot. So we know that the correct program is program A. So when I press the uh, A key on the keypad, which is the uh, upper right hand corner button, uh, we should see two things. We should see the OLED display give uh, feedback on that, and we should also see the uh, blue landing light come on. So let's give that a shot. Now executing A, and there we got it. Okay, so we have three check marks and blue light indicating that uh, we're on track. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to go ahead and uh, emulate this kind of functionality on your system. Uh, it's not too uh, long until uh, it'll be uh, D-Day, time to actually uh, fly your craft down to a landing at the spaceport. So with that, we wish you uh, good luck, safe flying. Remember, build everything and fly safe.